The Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, David White. And welcome all to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour. As always, we come together at the appointed time. And, of course, uh, it would always be something else. No, it's not that. Uh, why would it do that? I don't know. Yeah, just sometimes. Some of this uh, older stuff I have is a little buggy. We'll see about uh, that. But, uh, eh, what can you say? Anyway. The appointed time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. My OCD won't let me get through without that. 877-927-6648. So what do we have? Well, uh, it is a bloodbath incarnate. As I said uh, during the 2 p.m. update, which I now do, uh, I'm debating whether or not there, were, there was more blood today in the markets or in Kill Bill Volume 2. And I understand that they had two 55-gallon drums of blood for that movie. Uh, but uh, a 3% move on the S&P onto the downside. And it wasn't something that we couldn't see that wasn't, wasn't coming. Uh, what did I have in my... Well, let's just put it up here. This is my uh, newsletter yesterday morning uh, that I was looking at... Uh, Low volume up and down. It's all fun and games till someone loses an eye. We have monthly expiration on uh, quad witching on Friday. It's uh, quad witching, though, you see a little bit more. The two things that really hit me were the trend readings on the Amex. I really like the uh, Amex because it's uh, just the big ETFs, and most of the home gamers tend to play those. So when you see them, we'll go down here to the readings uh, down there. We had, uh, this is yesterday morning's newsletter. Uh, we had a 0 0.74, 0 0.79, and uh, 0.6 uh, the day before. So we've had, uh, uh, well, four days of below one trend reading on the NASDAQ. Uh, and you really never got uh, any kind of significant volume yesterday. Um or into uh, Friday was fairly light. Uh, you got less than uh, 10 billion shares on the CBOE uh, consolidated volume. Uh, other things uh, that were showing that we were getting ready for a very nasty time, the VIX put call ratio was very low. Go to that. 28% on the VIX. Uh, I use that more than anything because it's one of the few times that you get uh, the number separated out from the uh, the rest of the market. Now, the VIX is just the premiums in the out-of-the-money stocks in the S&P 500. That's one of the few times you get a, a reading on just how many people are thinking about buying out-of-the-money opposed to in the money. You can look at the equity PC. That's pretty low, but yesterday or going into Friday, that was 34%. So both of those were incredibly low. We had a lot of people getting on one side of the market or another. Uh, dark pool numbers uh, continue to be elevated, which suggested the retail trader was not getting involved in this hoot nanny of uh, pushing the market higher. And uh, we had lots of uh, highly shorted stocks, although we didn't have a lot of people short. The ones that had been highly shorted, I know in the den, uh, they go after Sava a lot. But I think it had, uh, when we talked yesterday morning, the options weren't that bullish on it. But certainly, I think it was getting 34 40% short uh, sellers in it. Uh, it's pretty easy to run those folks. Kind of the same thing as we talked about yesterday uh, when we got into, uh, when we got into, uh, Apple, and I thought it was uh, highly suspect uh, that we would see something like Apple 
have such a run after it couldn't get anything going uh, during its dog and pony last week on its iPhone. I said uh, that the self-serving article about uh, just uh, how they uh, couldn't keep up uh, and crashed the servers was uh, something from maybe 15, 20 years ago, not something where you can put on uh, 20 major servers every second from Amazon Web Services or uh, Microsoft Web Services. Uh, I know Apple uses both of those. So a, a suspect story uh, kind of planted. You've got a pretty nice reversal in Apple here today, but uh, you know, there was a lot of things out there. What we, what I didn't really have was an incredible turnaround. We had a little bit of weakness uh, going into the close yesterday, but there wasn't that smoking gun other than everything else telling us we are it were incredibly close. Uh, but uh, if you just looked at it, backed out all the news, did you get a real good signal that said, hey, Tomorrow is the day that everything is going to go to hell in a handbasket. Well, you, you, you had everything leading up to it. Uh, the only thing was the indictment, which you get today. Uh, this still puts you over the three by three on Apple today. As I said, the best thing that could happen is we'd pull back on light volume today. Now, is today so far a huge volume day? It certainly is bigger than the other days that we've been coming in when the uh, high five billions to low six billion as we start the show. Uh, today, uh, 6.8 billion already. So we're up about 15, 20% for run rate. Important for us to see whether or not we're going to go back and test those lows in the 3700s in the S&P is what volume is in the next couple of days. Now, I have a lot of people asking me if I would buy anything. And long ago, I set some rules uh, because I lost a lot of money uh, ignoring rules. And for me, that rule is always three days. That is, if we have a wicked move uh, with huge numbers, it has been exceedingly rare, not never happened, but exceedingly rare that I wouldn't have been better off waiting three days. So no one knows what's going to happen, but using history as a gauge, it would say that at least we have three days. Now, we've got the trains going on strike, maybe on Friday, maybe not. My guess is that we don't go anywhere until the Fed gets involved next Wednesday at 2 p.m. And 1% one, 1 rate hike? Do we get that next Wednesday? I think it's better than a 50-50 chance. Is it 100%? No. But I think it's uh, as good as a flip of a quarter. And that makes me think that a lot of people are going to be sitting on the sidelines until they see Mr. Fed tell us what we're going to do. Yesterday, we spent some time uh, on uh, the TLT. We were talking about looking at a move back to 101. Got to... 106.24 today, but uh, we solidly broke it. We're staying below it. I don't really see anything out here other than a little bit more volume. We've had the last three or four days in it, uh, but that will be at a lower close, most likely. We'll be back in a minute. of booming inflation where your purchasing power is eroded there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold vista gold's flagship asset is the mount todd gold project in the northern territory of australia this is australia's largest undeveloped gold project we are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district this is a large-scale low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Free at one eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. Internationally at seven two seven eight seven three seven six one eight. As we come back uh, to a. Uh, bloody Tuesday. Some people were calling it Black Tuesday. Can you say that anymore? Don't know. Uh, anyway, uh, S&P and last tick was uh, 39.82. As I said, uh, we get a little more volume and that opens uh, the door again to 37.50-ish. Uh, I've never liked that we didn't go back and retest that low. As I said uh, yesterday, a low is not a low until it's been retested. I got that drummed in my head by uh, Tim Ord very early on and saw the wisdom of it. I think a lot of people abandoned that over the last five years as the Fed got involved in manipulating the market. Now that they're uh, letting the bathwater out of the tub, I think a lot of those things that worked for the previous 120 or 50 years are coming back and in spades. Uh, anyway, uh, Dow's uh, down 2.8%, 31.469. Russell's down 3.1% at 18.46. Crude, 87.67. Uh, it's one of the better ones. I uh, was posting some of the uh, sectors out there, and uh, we'll get to those in a little bit. We've got some questions. Uh, but, uh, you know, it was... I think it was like solar stocks were one of the few stocks that was kind of uh, that sector. At least some of them were holding up. Um, this is an important day, even if you don't have a position to start looking and seeing what's holding up and what's not. Doesn't mean that we're not going to get some more moves down. Generally, what's holding up today will start to crack. And that is the very end of a downtrend or a move like we've seen today. But uh, as I said, I'm not much of one getting in uh, to the markets after a huge single day move down for three days. Somebody brought it up in the den. I think it was uh, uh, Dudette uh, about margin calls. Those come rather late in the day. I think a lot of folks, especially on Wall Street, had been chasing this move, trying to get positive returns back in. And they may have been margined out to the hilt 
you never know. But uh, the uh, proof of the pudding, as uh, uh, Warren Buffett said, is you don't know who is swimming with a, uh, without a bathing suit until the tide goes out. And uh, the tide goes out to about 2.30, 3, 3.30. We should be uh, getting, if we're going to get some margin calls for everybody that was long, uh, just like we get uh, those uh, – uh, folks uh, in the same thing when we're sh when they're short on margin. A uh, question in the den about BCLI being a double repo. It would be a double repo if it closes back below the previous, uh, the uh, three by three. Uh, this is the opposite side of that, which means it's okay unless it closes below the line. If it closes below the three by three, then that would suggest you're going back to uh, Two dollars and fifty, two dollars sixty-five cents, something like that, where it started. So this is just the opposite side of that. You stay over it for a long term. You come underneath it for a handful of days. You go back over it, and then the next move lower uh, that breaks the three by three is the end of it. So this would be a setup for bearishness, although I'm not saying it's going to be bearish, but the double repo pattern. Uh, if it came in, would be bearish. That's fine. Uh, as long as it stays above the three by three, you're, you're cool. Uh, t -t 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 question uh, about going long MRVL from our friend Will. Uh, as I said, I'm not a big fan out here at all about being anything long, at least for three days and probably into Wednesday next week uh, for the Fed, because my guess is the volume's all going to dry up come Monday or Tuesday morning next week, and that's going to be it. Uh, you may get a little bounce if uh, there's a settlement in the train dispute uh, for a strike, because that could kill everything. Uh, on a strike, I would probably be long crude. Uh, the reason why, uh, of course, uh, the, the uh, policy from the U.S. government has been to kill domestic production, part of that was to kill off the uh, pipelines. And that actually forced a lot of this crude to be towed around by the train companies. So if you wanted to be short train companies, that's a harder trade. To me, the easier trade is to be long in energy, probably. And if uh, there is no strike, I could see uh, uh, crude being 20 bucks higher in a couple of weeks. So that would be my thought on that. 877-927-6648. Uh, uh, I'm 80 points in September in Q short. Should I stay in a Friday expiration? I don't see any reason for covering uh, a short position uh, for three days. Generally, if I get a, if I'm good enough to uh, set the hook at the right time, uh, I sit on my hands for three days because that generally is the best time. Does that mean it will pay off today? No, but the odds are three days. You're going to see a retest of the, today's low or you're going to see it uh, significantly uh, broken. But uh, I would look at the volume on the close today. You'll see that about 420 from the CBOE. If we've done something like 12 billion shares today, uh, that connotes that we've broken these levels and that we will retest the 3750 area, and I'd want to sit on my hands. But I don't know how many people are wanting to get in front of the Fed or the strike on Friday. So I, at best, maybe you go sideways and expire at 4,000 on the S&P cash on Friday. Uh, but I don't see a lot that's going to change. Um, I, it was kind of almost ridiculous uh, to listen uh, to CNBC this morning. And literally uh, denying uh, reality was uh, uh, James Kramer. And uh, we've had a lot of requests for this. But uh, I'll go back to 2008 for The Daily Show, where we heard... Bring me the head of the false prophet, Jim Cramer. Well, certainly I have yet to see a 
someone uh, that was so far on the wrong side of the market and then not just say, I'm wrong, let's move along. In fact, I, I think one of the best things you can do as a trader is to say, I'm wrong today. I may be wrong for a week. I may be wrong for a month. But I've got my stops. Uh, but generally, if you're uh, a, a dancing bear on TV, I don't know if you get that opportunity to be that nuanced. But, uh, you know, if you don't have at least some mental stops out there, you don't take, uh, take your stops, uh, small stop, uh, which you could have this morning. Then you're one day going to take the mother of all stops and uh, become a Walmart greeter. We'll be back in a minute. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And I misread uh, an email. Uh... Maybe on the wrong side of this for uh, Ben. Um, yeah, again, whether you're long or short, you've been on the wrong side. You're thinking maybe I'm going to get my cash back. I don't see a lot of reasons. Uh, generally, if you're on the wrong side of the market, though, I tend to want to get my cash back uh, as soon as possible. Clear my head and then go into the next trade. Uh, if I've uh, sat too long on the wrong side, uh, generally the market's never been kind to me. But I think you, I think you, at least for the next couple of days, I would sit on my hands, even if I'm on the wrong side, uh, and see what goes on. But yeah, uh, 
Uh, I don't know if you're going to, I don't know if you're going to get it, but uh, it's uh, at least going your way. 877-927-6648. Uh, did we get all those? Uh, yesterday we talked a little bit about uh, uh, the uh, semiconductors. Uh, today I want to get in on uh, Twitter just a little bit. And not so much about Twitter itself, TWTR, uh, but uh, what came out of the hearings today. Uh, which was uh, something right out of a uh, John Le Carre novel. If you don't really know him right off the bat, Day of the Jackal, uh, Tinker Tailor, Soldier Spy, all those great 80s, uh, late 70s, 80s uh, Cold War spy books from a guy whose name wasn't John Le Carre. That was his pen name. He was an actual spy uh, that uh, worked with... Uh, the guy that wrote James Bond saw his uh, rise to fame, decided to write uh, a little bit more true to the heart of uh, actual spy business. Uh, and uh, the books are pretty good. I always loved them. Uh, the only thing the hearing today didn't have was George Smiley. That's a deep reference for those John Le Carre fanboys like me. Uh, but certainly, uh, what did we have uh, for Twitter? Uh, we found out that they have spies from just about every country in the world, and they ignored them. Um, but that's probably not the big news out of it. The, probably the big news was uh, that you have uh, the senator from Massachusetts uh, and many of the ones on the far side of the other aisle, as far as she's on the other side of the other side of the aisle, talk about uh, uh, and come together on sponsoring bills for oversight for a lot of these companies. Uh, so far, what we know about that is they will be organizing it very much like the French do, uh, where the U.S. Uh, basically says, uh, you know, you hire your own guys. You tell us, you know, that everything's okay at your company and that you're doing all the things that you're supposed to do, and we'll disbelieve you. That's pretty much it. Uh, anyway, uh, a lot of times these things don't go very far. But there's pretty wide ex uh, acceptance now uh, for censorship on uh, regulation on the right and for security on the left uh, going forward. So I don't think any of these companies are going to be doing uh, well in the uh, near future. Uh, even companies like Apple that have advertised security we found out uh, that they've been uh, uh, riding dirty, as a lot of people like to say, uh, on this issue. So, um, as you said yesterday, uh, even Apple seemed rather uh, obnoxious in the way uh, that uh, they were uh, pumping um, what I thought was bogus um, information on a server. Uh, somebody in the den said something about uh, there's not uh, web services in China. They have the same thing. It's just not U.S. servers. So, And they work fairly well. They're all managed by people from uh, Google and Amazon, too. The only thing, the difference is that they're located there. So I am not buying that either, uh, that uh, suddenly they had so many people that they crashed everything. Uh, China has just as many uh, server farms and uh, web services companies uh, based on the exact same software we use here in the United States. Um, so I'm not uh, going to grant them any special dispensation other than uh, I, we saw kind of the same thing yesterday, and that was Intel was busy leaking uh, their uh, latest chip technology well in advance of uh, anything coming out. And that always has me thinking about uh, something I haven't gotten yet to, to, to today, but I want to because uh, announcing products way in advance uh, has been kind of a no-no for technology for quite a while. And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. 
On this day in 18, or 1983, not 1883, Osborne Computer Corporation declares bankruptcy only two years at, after it started producing the first portable computer. The Osborne One computer industry lore has it that the Osborne effect, i.e., announcing a product well in advance, was enough to kill them off. Uh, there was also lots of competitive pressure and mismanagement, uh, but generally companies don't die from a single wound but a perfect storm of them doing stupid stuff. And uh, so when I see uh, people announcing stuff like uh, Intel yesterday, uh, Apple announcing something that I found highly dubious, I was looking fairly closely at uh, a market that was probably ready to turn and not a good way if you were bullish. On this day in 1983, um, I was actually writing about something else today uh, in a statistics class about uh, technical analysis and why we have a lot of things the way we have them. They go back to the Osborne that didn't have any kind of uh, uh, math coprocessor. Uh, so a lot of the stuff that we have out here today is colored by how easy it is to compute instead of actually computing it correctly. That stuff still lingers today. Okay, other things going on. Uh, okay. Yeah. I'll get back to that after. I've got to look that up. Okay, TMO. Too much, uh, not too much information. That's TMI. Uh, to the Thermo uh, Scientific. Um, like all of these, these are, you know, if you've been above or below the three by three for a handful of days in this one you look for the bounce you look for it to pull back and then on the next break back higher that is the double repo pattern that i like and that is you come back you get light volume and then the next push above it keeps you from getting started way too soon and getting squeezed out so that's it uh, time is running out i didn't know that uh, what is time running out on Oh, I've got to go to Arby's, apparently. Uh, I don't know how I got that email. Uh, I will be a pig. Okay. Um, we'll go back and look at this uh, a little bit more. Uh, is there a chance it'll go back to 585 area by Friday? Don't think so. We'll be back in a minute. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors.
are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold. Traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. As we return, uh, somebody had a question in here about one of my comments earlier in the day, and that was about black boxes. Um, I said that one of the things you want to look at uh, is uh, over time on these huge days. Um, generally, the previous big downturn or upturn uh, will have uh, the black boxes set up to try to buy or sell them. And... Right now, that's about a thousand points on the Dow. Doesn't seem like it's uh, so much on the other indexes. But I have a feeling on the Dow, it's there because uh, they're looking for uh, weak hands from retail traders. And instead of looking at uh, a decent index like the S and P 500 or the uh, wide Nasdaq Composite, they'll look at things like the Nasdaq 100 with six stocks that make up. 60% uh, of the entire index, or the Dow that's uh, 30, which is 96% uh, institutionally owned, only about 4% is actually out there. So you'll see some wide swings in, uh, in the Dow, and I think that gets a lot of the retail uh, traders who really don't know what they're doing going, and that's why black boxes are probably set on the Dow, uh, trying to uh, shake weak hands. Um, again, I'm not a big fan of going after a big move like this uh, after news when we'll know we're going to be waiting for additional news. If this was over, one and done, but uh, I think everybody's now going to be thinking about uh, the trains on Friday and the Fed next week, whether or not you get a 1% uh, uh, move. You may get a little bit of a bounce out of a three-quarter percent move, but uh, my bet is that there's at least uh, when we start looking at the numbers, I haven't looked at them quite yet. Uh, I'll wait until tomorrow and look at the odds. But my guess is we're going to see better than a 50% chance uh, tomorrow on uh, a 1% move for next Wednesday. Uh, that's the Fed, by the way, at 2 p.m. And I believe they're going to have a dog and pony presser after it. That starts at 2.30, so you're only going to know uh, what they tell us by 3.15. But... Uh, yeah, going to think that they're fairly hawkish. Uh, I don't think that those numbers are going to come anywhere close. As I said, uh, maybe one of the, if you've got to be long, um, you've got uh, the uh, oil stocks that could be doing well on a, uh, if you're in the right one, not all of them, but if you're in the right one, probably crude numbers uh, on uh, trains because so much more is moved by the train now, and that was, I think, a, a payoff uh, for uh, William Buffett, who owns a lot of the train companies on the on that. So you've got so much move now on train cars instead of by uh, pipeline. That adds about two bucks uh, per barrel for a lot of that. But uh, if you're not moving it by rail and you've outlawed uh, pipelines. Yeah, could we have a huge additional second shock to the market uh, if the uh, train, uh, train train guys actually do go out on strike? 
So the first barrier to, uh, to pass is uh, Friday strike, and then the second one is the Fed next Wednesday. I think we could be pushed down for a while going into it. As, uh, as much as everybody was euphoric going in to the close yesterday, my guess is they're probably going to be that bearish going into the Fed next week. Anyway, uh, yeah, a thousand, about a thousand, thousand fifty tends to be uh, a, a fairly significant number, and uh, and I think that could be the reason why. Uh, to, to what else do we want to get to? I think I got some more emails out here. Okay, let's see about uh, question about Microsoft. Uh, What do we want? Okay. Let's take a look. Uh, oh, uh, I had a question. Of where are all the spies? Uh, spies from Saudi Arabia. Uh, this is at Twitter. Yeah, spies from Saudi Arabia, China, Russia, uh, India. And I'm trying to remember. There was two more, two more countries that they had known spies in. And this guy, um, the whistleblower, uh, wouldn't say where he worked in government. I'm assuming... That when you say you work for the government, you're either working for the CIA or the NSA. Since he was in computer security for 30 years, I'm assuming he worked for the NSA, although he did not say. Uh, but uh, I think he was busy ratting everybody else out to the to the FBI of all these people that were literally working at the company uh, and uh, using their data all the time. Kind of a very interesting Matahari kind of story uh, for Twitter, but I just thought that could get that in. Yes, they had spies from. Oh, and Saudi, did I say Saudi Arabia? Uh, spies from Saudi Arabia looking at dissidents in their country, uh, and probably the best quote out here was that he told the CEO uh, that they had a Russian spy in there, and he says, "You know, they have elections there, so it's a democratic state. What are we supposed to do?" Just let them stay because uh, if we kick them out, maybe they won't let us in Russia. I mean, you, you got a lot of chutzpah uh, to be a U.S. Uh, corporation and say we're just going to ignore Russian known Russian spies. Like I said, he kind of was in the uh, business for about 30 years, so the guy was uh, quite impressive today. Uh, oh, back to Microsoft, already in progress over most of TFNN, uh, if I could actually type the symbol correctly, MSFT. Okay. Um, this is what you're looking for uh, in my double repo pattern. Well, mine, not mine. Joe DiNapoli kind of pioneered it. I like it. I kind of use a modified version of it. Um, but once you break Here's the uh, bullish version of this. Um, you break down below the three by three after you've been, uh, um, and you go down for 10, 15 days or up 10, 15 days. In this case, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 days. You get two days above it, you close back below it. Now, what you need to do is really see the volume over the next couple of days. Um, come back. As I said, uh, I was looking for a retest, I think on Friday we talked about this, I was looking for a retest of 251.94 that's uh, 21 million shares you got 16 million, so you're probably going to end up with at least 21 million today. What you need is all the volume to come back out, and then the next close above it actually is the one to buy if you're thinking you're bullish on this and you're trying to buy some kind of V-bottom but the big thing here is you don't want to anticipate. You do want to wait most of the time for the pop above. If you're uh, planning on using options, you normally have to anticipate that move. But right now, you want to test 251.94. It's probably the premier company right now in the NASDAQ as far as being run correctly and lots of got cash, got a wide product margin. Uh, you still need a test, 251.94, that's September 6th. Well, we'll be back in a minute. 
Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC Capital Market Assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And we come back ready to wrap up another show. Let's uh, see what the indexes are telling me here. Let's update them here. Um, yeah, I like I said, I'm not a big fan. Wait three days uh, on a big move, on a thousand point move. You're more than likely, not always, but more than likely to get a retest of the lows. Uh, not a reference uh, to marijuana at all. 420. Uh, is the time that all the volume is reported by the CBOE for the day. It uh, does uh, follow 20 minutes, uh, so you generally don't get uh, all that in. Don't have much in the way of uh, earnings uh, this week. I think we've got Adobe on Thursday night. I think that's about it. So as the you know, as for the things going to affect uh, the retail news-driven trader. Uh, the trains and then the uh, Fed next Wednesday. So we'll keep an eye on that. In fact, let's, uh, before we come up uh, to the end of the day here, let's take a look uh, at uh, volume. Uh, to, 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 what do we have out here? We've got uh, about 7.7 .7 billion shares right now. So, you know, it hasn't been like we've gotten a lot of volume either up or down. So I'm not going to pro uh, proselytize 
uh, that volume is telling us that we're either going to hell in a handbasket or, or right back up to the top in S&P 6000. Uh, but uh, certainly we have a market that is uh, volatile and it probably remain volatile. I don't like lows until they've been retested. And that would probably tell us 3750 on a retest on light volume. Maybe we have it. September has always been the worst month to see downdrafts in a market. So be careful. Stops are there for a reason. You don't take uh, a small stop. Today you'll take the mother of all stops. So when you can, not when you have to. We'll see you here tomorrow. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible.